When Lance Zerline speaks, I listen, okay? In the same vein that like when I speak, you guys don't listen, I listen to Lance Zerline vividly. As vividly as you don't, I do. When he moves, I move. When he talks, I listen. When he looks, I look the same way, okay? And I, I think y'all should do the same. Around rookie dynasty draft time, when we're looking into the prospects, Lance Zerline, Dane Brugler, uh, Daniel Jeremiah, those three, absolute rocket fire. And it's good. Listen, it's good to listen to people in the fantasy community because we have a perspective of how drafts are going to go. But when you want to actually, you know, get a real grip on what's happening in the class, you want to tap into the dudes that are actually uh, around the teams and have insider in, uh, information with the GMs and the agents and the player and the personnel. And that's what these guys do. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Lance Zerline works for NFL.com. He puts out player profiles for pretty much, I, I want to say every prospect. I'm actually, actually not sure how deep it goes, but he gives each player a grade and he gives each player a little write up and he gives each player a little, um, and he gives each player a player comp. Okay. And you can go find that at NFL.com. We'll link that down below. So we're going to combine a person that you shouldn't care about with a person that you should care about and maybe find something that matters in the middle. We're going to look at my top 12 rookie rankings up to this point. We're going to go one quarterback because I want to do the skill players. We, you know, every time uh, we do like mock drafts and we just do super flex, it's like four or five spots get taken over by QBs right away. We haven't got to like the mid second, late second round of uh, rookie drafts yet. So this will hopefully bring in some of those later players. We're going to look at my top 12 rankings. We're then going to look at NFL.com and see who lands their line comps them to and then talk about whether or not I agree because listen his word is for sure more valuable than mine ain't no fucking doubt about it no doubt about what NFL.com pays them way more than whatever my boss pays me I don't pay myself a lot so I, I want you to take these with a grain of salt as well because you could look at his previous years and listen he misses like everybody else okay some of his uh, stuff is really good some of his stuff has not been as it hasn't aged as well uh, as some of his has better stuff but uh, overall he is really really fucking good with this stuff and has really good information as it relates to prospects so that's what we're gonna do because at this point I am like 40, 45, maybe even 50 rookies deep into my like film study and analysis and looking at numbers and analytics and all that stuff. And I put out a, a Twitter thread actually yesterday on it. It wasn't very long, but I, I want to continue as I keep doing it and go follow me at Nick Ercolano on Twitter. And I'm starting to develop my rookie rankings. So I am, you know, a round, two rounds, almost three rounds into my full rookie ranking, super flex and one quarterback pre-order for the rookie draft guide will be live on Monday, I believe. Let's fucking tuck our shirts in. Wow, I feel like a cowboy with this fit. I didn't even realize how I looked going out. Y'all let me fucking go out like this? Y'all let me go out in public looking like a motherfucking saddle rancher? If Lance Erline dresses like this, I dress like this. Okay, so here's what NFL.com's website looks like as it relates to the prospects. And he has a list of all the uh, participants and then their grades, basically. And if you go to any specific player page, right, like Jalen Carter, his highest graded player in this class, 7.11. What does that mean? On the bottom, he's got a key for what all these things mean. The perfect prospect, perennial all pro. So he was a 7.11, which I believe gets him in the category of Pro Bowl talents. Uh, I want to say like Trevor Lawrence is probably like seven, eight, seven, nine or something like that. But I think you can look at all the previous years as well. All right. I can't find them, but I'm sure you could find them somewhere on the internet. Right. So we're going to go through my rankings and don't worry. These are not like you can't screenshot them because I've only uh, done the first 12 just for the sake of this video. But I guess I'm giving them away right away. We're going to go through each one and then we're going to go through his comp on them. And again, pre-order will be available for the rookie draft guy coming soon on Monday. But our rankings will be there for super flex, for quarterback, for all this sheesh. And uh, without further ado, obviously, Bijan Robinson is the 101. Let's go take a look at him. I believe he's his fourth overall graded player on this list at a 6.8, which is a year one starter, of course. Uh, comparison, Josh Jacobs. Okay, that's an interesting one. It's probably a little less dialed down that I think most people have been used to throughout this rookie draft process because you hear a lot of Saquon Barkley with maybe a little bit less athleticism Noah Compton to David Johnson which I think is good because he's excellent in the passing down game which is interesting uh if you look at the overview we're not going to read through like all of his you know write-ups and strengths and all that kind of stuff you guys can go check it out it's more for the comp to see you know where he's coming from and what he thinks I think uh Josh Jacobs proved to us this year that he's he's more of a well-rounded back than probably giving credit for coming out of college he was a good pass catcher but only inefficiency wasn't a volume guy but he's proved the last couple of years he can catch a ton of balls obviously led the NFL in rushing this year so I think like 
immediately you look at this comp and you say, ooh, underwhelming, considering everyone was talking about Saquon Barkley and considering everyone was talking about all these like uh, legendary high upside running backs. And then you see Josh Jacobs, and you're like, eh. But if you consider recency bias, Josh Jacobs was like, you know, number one, two, or three in the NFL this year in terms of just running back production. So I understand. Interesting comp there. But I think overall uh, what this signals is kind of like Bijan Robinson is probably a more angry, better runner than we're giving him credit for possibly. Um, or at least stylistically, he is he is more runner runner than just like pure athlete. But he's going to contribute obviously in the passing game because he's awesome there. But I also think it speaks to probably like Josh Jacobs being underrated in that aspect. Let's look at number two. I have Jameer Gibbs on the big board for right now. And honestly, talent wise, I think he's close to a lot of the other running backs in this class. But every mock draft has pretty much been having Gibbs flirting with first round draft capital and every other, you know, RB three to five in like the uh, third or fourth round, which is problematic. So he has Jameer Gibbs down here at six, three, seven graded out. It will eventually be a plus starter. His comparison is Alvin Kamara. Okay. That's a pretty low hanging fruit. I think in the fantasy community, uh, when Gibbs might not be the engine of an NFL running game, he's more than capable of adding juice to the offense. He's a slasher who can stretch defenses wide. So Gibbs is obviously a really good pass catcher. He's one of those guys that I think he will be a little bit situation dependent. And I think you could probably argue that Alvin Kamara's career would have been semi-situation dependent and he got the high end of the spectrum because he landed in New Orleans with Sean Payton in an offense where you saw Drew Brees is one of the best screen quarterbacks of all time uh, that was just a highly fluid offense behind an amazing offensive line for years and years and years and years and they were a team that threw to the running back at a clip of like 30 percent almost every year that Alvin Kamara was there was it a product of Alvin Kamara being really good in the passing game? A little bit, yes, but that was just the way their offense operated under Drew Brees, especially in his latter years. Kamara was also a great runner. He was also very shifty. He was also very good with contact balance, very good on the goal line. So I think overall, the comp makes sense from a talent standpoint. They look similar when they're on the field. They play stylistically pretty similar, I would say. Uh, I do worry about Gibbs and his situation. Like if he does not go to an upper echelon situation like the New Orleans Saints seven years ago, the Philadelphia Eagles this year, if he ends up in like Houston, sure, he could be good, but will he have an Alvin Kamara type career where he's a perennial top five fantasy running back year over year over year? Unlikely. Number three, I have Jordan Addison as my wide receiver one. He's got Jordan Addison down at his fifth graded wide receiver in this class. Interesting. Will eventually be a plus starter. His comp is Tyler Lockett. Hey, that's uh, I think I, br I did a, an individual video on Jordan Addison like two weeks ago, but then the mock draft that me and Ray did together, me and Ray G, if you haven't watched that one, that was a really good one. I gave Jordan Addison a Tyler Lockett comp in that video. So we are on par there. I think the more I watch Jordan Addison, like I do fall in love with the way he runs his routes and how like fluid he is on the field. I don't think he's as like, I don't think his upside is of Garrett Wilson-esque. I don't think his upside is of players that will be top five, like Stefan Diggs Esque. I think Tyler Lockett is a really good comp who's going to be, yeah, Jordan Addison is going to be a really, really good player for a really, 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 really long time. I do question the ceiling fantasy wise of what Jordan Addison can become, which I think Tyler Lockett makes a lot of sense. Jackson Smith and Jigba is my 104 in one quarterback leagues and my wide receiver two in the class. Now he has Jackson Smith and Jigba down at wide receiver. What is that like fucking eight or nine? Wow. Below Tyler Scott, below Tank Dell. It's probably because he's going to pigeonhole him into a slot role, if I had to guess. Jarvis Landry. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Smith and Jigbit is a possession slot receiver who lacks the shake to separate underneath. Now, he, he'll be an interesting one because, you know, he had that early breakout, that sophomore year breakout while sharing the field with Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. So people love the numbers there. Didn't play really at all last year because of an injury. So we didn't get any junior statistics, but the sophomore statistics were more than enough. And when you listen to Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave talk about this kid, they talk about how. He's better than them, but I don't believe that for a second. I don't think Jackson Smith and Jigba is anywhere near as good as Garrett Wilson is going to be at the NFL level. Uh, but Smith and Jigba is a slot wide receiver. His range of outcomes can be anywhere from Jarvis Landry to he's not an outside receiver. He's not a guy who like separates via man coverage. He's not a guy who's going to run you know a four four zero flat at the combine. Who's going to separate via like pure athleticism. But he could be Jarvis Landry. He could be Amon Ross St. Brown. Absolutely. Can he be um, Cooper Cup? I mean, like, you can't ever project anyone to be Cooper Cup, but that's the type of player we're looking at. He's someone that's going to beat you through 
a million different ways. He's going. He's someone that is just smart. He's athletic enough. He's really, really good at finding soft spots in the zone. He's good at separating from man coverage when they're playing off of him when it's not press coverage. So uh, Jarvis Landry makes sense. He's really, really good at someone who can like make plays after the catch. Not necessarily like overly flashy and elusive, but Jarvis Landry comp makes sense. I think a lot of people again will be disappointed because these rookies we get so infatuated with them and we always go to best case scenario. What's their ceiling? Can they be top five fantasy wide receivers? Jarvis Landry was a wide. If you drafted Jarvis Landry in Dynasty as a rookie, you had like a wide receiver two for what, like eight years in a row. That's a really, really key piece of a Dynasty league when you're, you know, you're starting nine guys, 10 guys, you've gotten 10, 12, 13% of your starting roster for eight years. That's the type of player Jackson Smith and Jigaba can be. And he's got that upside because you can't deny the statistical significance of what he did as a sophomore was crazy. So yeah, I, I think, you know, I'm on Ross St. Brown, like, let's go. I just made that up because he said uh, fucking Jarvis Landry, but it makes sense. Uh, Quentin Johnson, he is my wide receiver three, my 105. Let's see where he's got Johnson. He's got him as three at a 6.4 grade. Will become good starter within two years. Alshon Jeffrey, interesting. Alshon Jeffrey, that feels a little bit like a weird comp to me because Alshon Jeffrey is more of like a bully on the outside, I felt like. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm, uh, maybe my memory is fading me. Maybe I'm aging here and my brain is getting smaller by the minute. Alshon Jeffrey felt like more like a possession outside wide receiver where like he won in the same way that kind of like Andre Johnson did or like Des Bryant did, where Quentin Johnson feels a lot more fluid off the line of scrimmage, a lot more quick twitch, a lot more like get the ball in his hands and let him make plays afterwards. Where Alshon Jeffrey, you don't think Alshon Jeffrey as like a yak guy. You don't think of him as someone who it's like, okay, playmaker, yes, but playmaker in terms of like get the ball to him not not like get the ball to him and let him make the play I don't know if that makes any fucking sense but catch radius makes sense uh downfield playmaker makes sense yes Alshon Jeffrey I think probably a little more physical than Quentin Johnson though Kayshawn Butte is my wide receiver four and my 106 right now he's got Butte all the way down with the same grade as Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, it looks like wide receiver 10 ish Terrace Marshall ooh interesting comp Terrace Marshall I don't think we know really what he is yet I think the overbearing hype from when he was a rookie makes him feel like an absolute bust. Um, he was something like broke out early, but I think one of the red flags or one of the learning points from a guy like Terrace Marshall is like his breakout age. Like the reason he broke out so early was very heavily due to his touchdown marker. And a lot of times when you see guys have really, really big touchdown numbers at an early age, and that's what accounts for like their like breakout age, and they're not doing it as a total of receptions and receiving yards and things like that that number is very fluky in fantasy we we know that so when you do it all from a touchdown marker the next year you know you might score four touchdowns and not be as productive as a receiver we don't really know how good the player is but Terrace Marshall had a little bit of a revival last year with the Panthers I'm not going to say he's a bad player I think Keishon Boutte is a much better player than Marshall I think he came on and became like the guy when Terrace Marshall got hurt at LSU so I do think it's an interesting comparison I think Boutte is way better on the outside, I think he's a better playmaker with the ball in his hands. I yeah, I don't I I don't necessarily uh really like this comp at all. Lance, do better. I'm right, you're wrong. You stink. Zach Charbonnet, my third running back here. And again, like very hard to do the running back rankings because after Bijan Robinson and probably Jamar Gibbs, the draft capital, they might all be clustered into the exact same draft spot anywhere from like pick 75 to 115. And then it's all going to be like situation dependent. Is someone sharing a backfield with Damian Pierce? Does one of them go to Philadelphia while Miles Sanders leaves for free agency? So uh, a little bit difficult again to just do the rankings, but pure film and numbers and everything at the college level. I have Charbonnet here with the expectations that he'll probably go in the third roundish of the draft. Let's see where he's got Charbonnet as his RB6 with a grade of 6.23 or tied with A chain will eventually be an average starter. NFL comparison, A.J. Dillon, upright runner with outstanding body composition and impressive production for the Bruins. A bit of a long strider. Uh, I guess that makes sense. I think it's a weird comparison. It depends how you look at A.J. Dillon. This is like one of the crazier stats ever. That A.J. Dillon as a freshman at Boston College had 300 carries and zero receptions. That is fucking insane. Because in order to be on the field for 300 plays worth of carries, you have to be on the field so much. Like, you are on the field all the time, and you can't catch one single ball. Eight receptions his sophomore year, 13 receptions his junior year. But when you look at Zach Charbonnet, I get it. I think the overwhelming sentiment here is that, like, Charbonnet is more of an imposing runner than he is necessarily like a make guys miss, a juke guy, an elusive guy, an agility guy. He's more of like someone who could be a 1A, 1B punch in a good timeshare. But Charbonnet, like 24 catches 
as a junior, 8.2 yards per reception. 37 catches as a senior, 8.7 yards per reception. Like when you get into the, the you know, 5, 6-ish, uh, 0.5 yards per reception number, you're starting to look at check down guys. You're starting to look at guys who happen to have workhorse roles in college that because they are the starting running back, they get a lot of checkdowns, and that's where that yards per reception number comes into play. When you start getting north of 8.5, you know, you're in the nine yard mark, you're probably a pretty good pass catcher uh, overall. So, Charbonnet, I, I think I understand where where the comp is coming from. Like right here, he can slip tackles in the open field, but lacks the first level wiggle to get too cute, which I think I agree with. I think he looked really good as a runner as a senior, but he'll probably be more of an imposing player. I do think he's got way more of a three down skill set than giving credit for here. And then what you look at with AJ Dillon, Jalen Hyatt is my number eight, my wide receiver five in the class. Hyatt's a guy I've kind of gone back on back and forth for, wow, his highest graded wide receiver in this entire class, 6.5 boomer bust potential. Yeah, it makes sense. Six foot 185. Is he only six feet tall? Is that true? Deshaun Jackson. Okay. Uh, yeah. I feel like doesn't, uh, not much needs to be said here. Going to come in extremely fucking fast. He's going to stretch the shit out of defenses. If defensive coordinators want to zone in on him, they can probably choose whether or not to take him out of a game. If they say, fuck it, we, you know, if he goes to an offense where there's a lot of playmakers already, uh, one of the mock drives, I think the one I did with Ray, again, uh, Jalen Hyatt, I want to say went first round to Buffalo. If he goes to Buffalo, you know, and the defenses have to worry about Josh Allen running and they have to worry about Stefan Diggs and maybe they draft a running back and they got to worry about an actual running game. Then Jalen Hyatt becomes an absolute fucking problem because you can't double team him. But if he goes to a team where he needs to be the wide receiver one immediately, I think defensive coordinators will have a very easy time kind of zoning in on him right away. But uh, Deshaun Jackson comp makes sense. Number nine, Josh Downs, the slot wide receiver out of UNC. I cannot get enough of this kid. I would definitely suggest going to watch him. I think I saw him rank pretty high, if I remember. Yep, his second highest grade wide receiver. Love to see that. This kid is so tough in in traffic. 5'10", 175. But he is, he's not small. Like he, He's built across the middle to take hits across the middle. He's built to be a really good slot wide receiver. Extremely good route runner. Extremely good in contested catch situations. Just extremely good playmaker. Like willing to lay it all out on the fucking line. Willing to go full extension mode to catch balls and make big time plays. He's a dude that like, whatever team drafts him, they're, the, every single fucking fan of that team is going to love this kid. Kadarius Tony. Okay. Free-flowing athlete with dynamic footwork. Makes a lot of sense. An instinctive feel for how to elude uh, opponents. So I guess his knock, while his route running is effective and fun to watch, that is very, very true, very fun to watch. Coaches will need him to be more disciplined and efficient in order to maintain the timing of play designs. Uh, yeah, I agree. I also think like the way that the slot wide receiver works in today's world, it's like you just got to be kind of good at getting open against zone coverage or just be a really, really good athlete, which I think Josh Downs is both of because you don't see a lot of like press coverage in the, in the slot. You don't see a lot of like man press coverage. You don't see a lot of like you don't need to have crazy, crazy off the line of scrimmage release game, right? You don't need to be a 97 in Madden on release in order to be good in the slot. Um, and I think Josh Downs, like every other part of him, and, and listen, this is not a knock whatsoever. Kadarius Tony's ceiling, I think is still pretty crazy in the NFL. And he graded him out as his second highest wide receiver in the class. So um, I would take that as, as more so of a compliment, knowing what we know about Tony now. Number 10 at the 110, I have Zay Flowers, our seventh ranked wide receiver. He's got Zay Flowers all the way. Where the fuck does he have Zay Flowers? As the wide receiver, seven. With a 6.35 grade, will eventually be a plus starter. Travis Benjamin. What? I don't even really remember what Travis Benjamin was good for. I feel like he was just like the most mid wide receiver three on every team that would like randomly make plays downfield. I'm actually going to read this overview out loud. Slot target who plays with unbridled energy and immense confidence. Flowers is slightly built, correct, but can sidestep press and fly into action with above average acceleration and attacking demeanor. Flowers has a tendency to rush his routes, but his ability to play with speed and move with athleticism makes him hard to read for defenders. His ball skills will shine brightly at times, but frustrating drops come with the package. Flowers has a skill set to become a valuable playmaker as a pro. Yeah, I kind of looked at him as a more explosive Jacoby Myers. He's kind of the way I was looking at um zay flowers like he doesn't his, his long speed doesn't jump off the film i do think he's probably going to run a pretty fast 40 given that he's you know 5 10 172 and at that size if you're moving you're probably moving pretty fucking fast has a tendency to rush his routes i think he's so fluid with his routes that maybe like the way that he bends into his routes makes it feel like he's rushing them at times but his ability to play with speed like his acceleration his agility is crazy his route running gets him open very 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 easily so travis benjamin unless i'm just like forgetting what the fuck Travis Benjamin was doing on an NFL field? That one's a little sus to me. Uh, number 11, y'all know I love Kendra fucking Miller. Kendra Miller's 20 years old. Is this correct? Did we do this correctly? Kendra Miller's 20.7? Holy shite. You love to fucking see it. Kendra Miller is my RB4. 
for now. Uh, we'll see where Kendra Miller racks up in Lance's cops and grades. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Sub six. I might just have Tony edit this entire part out. Why are you doing this? Average backup or special teamer? Why are you doing this to me? Doesn't even have a comp. He's so bad he can't be comp to an NFL player. He's not NFL worthy. What? The size and production will check important boxes, but Miller's lack of tempo and explosiveness between the tackles could turn him into a grinder against the speed of NFL defenses. I kind of agree. The lack of explosiveness could become a problem, but I think a lot of NFL players that are good runners don't necessarily need explosiveness through the line of scrimmage. His restricted stride length provides greater control to cut early in the run, but it works against him when he needs to hit the gas and stride past linebackers. I agree with that. His long speed won't be great. He has the size and strength to keep runs moving through contact, although he can be an even better run finisher. His third down value is relatively low, so we need to sell himself as an early down back up on the next level i agree with the last part his third down value is relatively low uh, as in the video i made on tuesday he's not a he's not a big time pass catcher so he will need to be really 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 good on first and second downs which i think he is but again i'm only a fucking guru expert uh perfect person when it comes to this stuff lance Erline is you know a little bit above me here so listen you start to take in analysis from all over the place okay I want to look at his 2022. I need to make myself feel better. So fuck you guys. All right, cool. That's all I needed to see. Kyle Pitts was the second best player in the draft. And it turns out Kyle Pitts actually was the worst player in that draft. So he's wrong a lot. And Kendrick Miller's a GOAT. Let's move on to number 12. Devon A-Chain. Texas A&M. Little guy. Little running back. Everyone knows him for being small and really, really fast. But he is a very, very good runner. Which is why he's a top five graded runner in this class. Per Lance at a 6.23. 5'9", 185. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be mad at that. I'm really, I'm so intrigued to see what he comes in with at the Combine. And for those of y'all that are unaware, the Combine is next weekend. So I, I believe testing-wise, quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends test on Saturday, March 4th. And then running backs are Sunday, March 5th. So do not make fucking plans. You should definitely make plans. What? Leon Washington. Yo, Leon Washington was low-key the GOAT for the Jets. If you're a Jets fan, you loved Leon Washington. He wasn't really any good as a running back, but he was so good as a returner, I feel like, unless I'm fucking lying again, which is I like all I do in these videos is lie. Leon Washington, I remember him being, I remember loving Leon Washington. I wasn't even a Jets fan, but I, I really liked this dude. But he was more of like a playmaker, special teams guy, which I guess does make sense. Finding a player comp for A-Chain is challenging because he has blazing speed and is a fearless inside runner. I think that's like the biggest takeaway here, right? This is what I'm trying to say. Like, he's 185, but he handles, he had a game against LSU where he handled 37 carries. He's good in between the tackles. He's not a dude who gets the handoff and because he's small, he tries to bounce things outside. He has the vision of like an Aaron Jones type player. He has the vision where he's like, I'm not looking to get outside and use my speed right away. I'm looking to find the right hole and then use my speed when it presents itself, man. A-Chain's a good fucking player. A-Chain can be a complimentary slasher with the ability to mismatch coverage out of the backfield. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think like, I don't think Leon Washington ever put together an actual usable fantasy season. Dude, as a rookie? As a rookie, what'd he go for? He almost went for a thousand yards as a rookie. That's kind of interesting. He had a 62 target season. This third year, he went for, what, 750? I mean, that's that ain't going to cut it, obviously, for fantasy purposes if you're using a top 15 rookie draft pick on it. But I get it, 5'8", 203. Yeah, I don't uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think we should just stick to comping Devon A. Chain to prime Todd Gurley and be done with it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. Well, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to try something new out today. I wanted to fuck around because I really like when the comps drop. It's almost like uh, you're playing like a lottery, like like the slots. Like each time you get onto a new page, you're like, who's the comp? Who's the fuck comp? Like, I need the comp. Injecting into my veins type shit. And it's fun scrolling down the pages. You're like, oh, I really like this player. Let Lance Zerline fucking ruin my entire day by looking at who he comped him to. So you can go check those out. Again, we'll put the link down below. Let me know how if you like this video. I could do more with just like specific positions. I could do it at the quarterback position or the tight end position or uh, or whatever. I don't know. We're just trying to experiment out here. We're trying to put terrible content out every single day. So uh, be ready for that pre-order on Monday for the Rookie Draft Guide. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I'll see y'all to, uh, I think Noah's got a video drop in tomorrow on Saturday. Also, Noah's doing fucking outstanding work. And if you have not subscribed to his website, noamoreparties.com, please do so. Wow.